This video is about finding the domain of a function, and again, we'll be using the interval notation we talked about yesterday. All right, so domain, remember, domain is all the x values occupied by the graph. All right, and today we're just focusing on domain. We're not worrying about range or whole. So one thing to keep in mind is that all equations start with the domain of negative infinity to positive infinity, all right? And then, but then a domain of an equation is limited when, at, when zero is in the denominator. And so we're going to explore when and how that can happen and how does it limit this as the domain. So for instance, look at this equation, 2x plus 3. Does it have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity? Well, the only thing that's going to limit it from being negative infinity to positive infinity is if it has a zero in the denominator. Does it have a denominator? No denominator at all. So that means there is no limitation, and that means the domain is just all real numbers, which we write as negative infinity to positive infinity. But look at example two. There's a denominator here, okay? So the question is, where is that denominator going to be zero? Right? What x value is going to create that to be zero? So you say 2x equals zero. Well, divide by two, that means when x is zero, this equation is going to be undefined, which means the domain does not exist there. So what I have to do is take my negative infinity and positive infinity and break it up with a zero. So I have to say negative infinity to zero, going left to right. It's going to stop there. And then it jumps over zero and then goes to positive infinity. So that's what's happening. Now think of a number line if you want. There's negative infinity, there's positive infinity, here's a zero. So everything's good up until zero, but then there's a big old hole there. And then the, so my interval notation has to depict what's happening on the number line. It goes from negative infinity to zero, jumps over zero, and goes from zero to positive infinity. Why zero? Because that's what makes the denominator a zero in this example. Let's try another example. Okay, again, we have a denominator to worry about, so that means there's going to be some limitation. So let's see what would make this denominator zero. So in this one, I have to look at this denominator. There's x in the denominator, so there could be places where this would be zero, which will make gaps in my domain. So I take x squared minus 2x, set it equal to zero. Because x is squared, I need to do a little factoring. In this case, just GCF. Factor out an x out of both terms, set it equal to zero. Now I think x equals zero, set each part equal to zero x minus 2 equals 0, and solve it for x. In this case, x is 2. So where x is 0, there's a gap, whereas x is 2, there's a gap. So if you need to think on a number line, think on a number line. Here's a 0, here's a 2. Everything's covered except here and here. So I'm going to have to write interval notation to depict these three areas. Here's area 1, 2, and 3. Okay, remember it's negative infinity to positive infinity. So as I write my form, my notation, it's going to be negative infinity to zero, excluding it, so I use a parenthesis, exclude zero again, and then from zero to two, everything between those two is good, and then skip over two, and then from two to positive infinity. So if you think on a number line, there's three sections created by these two gaps. That means there's three sections to my interval notation. Look at this guy, 5x over all this. Now, don't worry about the x on top, because remember, the limitations only come from the denominator. Take the, the trinomial on the bottom, set it equal to 0. But I have to factor this, okay? Okay, so we're going to do box method to factor. Remember, there's x squared here, there's x's in these corners, and then negative 28 goes on the bottom right. So we have to add to, tw to 3, but multiply to negative 28. So factors of 28. 4, negative 7, negative 7 and 4, those would give me the 3, which would give me positive 3, oops, sorry, this should be negative, this should be positive. Uh, this combo right here would give me a positive 3 when I add them together. So I'm going to just put them in the box, doesn't matter where, remember? And then I do GCF, so this is an X, this is an X, this, bring up the sign just like it is, and this would be a 4, and this would be 7. So I have x plus 7, x minus 4. Those are my two factors. Now, I have to set each one of those equal to 0. Oops, sorry. x 
x plus 7 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0. So in this case, where x is negative 7, if I plug that into the equation, I'm going to get a 0 on the bottom, which will be undefined. In this one, if I set it to 4, I'm going to get a 0 on the denominator, which will be undefined as well. So thinking back to number line, our lines like to go from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? But these are my two limitations. So I have one over here at negative 7, and I have one at 4. So everything else is game except for negative 7 and 4. So I have to write the notation accordingly. Three sections here, three sections in my notation. Negative infinity to negative 7. Negative 7 to 4. Remember using parentheses because we're excluding these values. And then 4 to positive infinity. All right. So there you go. There's the notation for this guy. Yes, you've got to be able to factor and solve and then write this in the correct notation. Okay, what about something like this? It's got a two-parter. All right, well, you treat each part separately because it all works together. Neither one of these denominators can be zero, so I have to treat them separate. So I have to figure out where is x zero? Well, that one's easy, where x is zero. Where is x plus three gonna equal zero? Well, that's where x is negative three. So remember, remember the number line. All equations want to go towards all real numbers. So here, but this one's going to have a gap at zero. This one's going to have a gap at negative three. So my notation has to reflect these three sections. One, two, three, all right? So we'll go from negative infinity to negative three, jump over negative three to zero, and then zero to positive infinity, okay? Those are the limitations on my domain. It, it, this graph exists everywhere this list. It jumps over the three, jumps over the zero. This is the answer I'm looking for. Now, number six, look at this. You got all this business up top and bottom, but we really don't care about the top, okay? Don't worry about the top. We are only focused on what's gonna make this not denominator zero, therefore making the equation undefined. So this is simple. X minus five equals zero. Well, that's gonna happen where X is five, right? So my only limitation is where X is five. Everything else is okay. So I'm going to go negative infinity to 5, and then 5 to positive infinity, okay? Now, we're going to do lots of this practice in class. Hopefully, you'll be comfortable by that point. I want you to try this last example. Here for class, I want you to try this one in your notes. Show all your work. Draw that number line to help you. Find the domain of this equation for me using interval notation. Good luck and see you in class.